Hello everyone and welcome to a truly wonderful game uh, that was played in the Baden-Baden tournament of 1925. Uh, it's a game between Richard Reti and Alexander Alekhin, both of them uh, legends in their own right. Uh, Richard Reti basically the father of hypermodern chess and Alexander Alekhin, uh, you guys know him of course as the world champion. Uh, but even without his world chess championship title, his games are breathtaking and uh, well, if you've ever seen a game uh, by Alekhin, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, at the time this game was played, he's still was not world champion uh, as um, uh, well to tell you a little bit about the tournament it was uh, basically the uh, era after the first world war there weren't really all that many events uh, taking place uh, especially on, on a grand scale you know with uh, big prizes and um, uh, famous names so uh, this is one uh, such tournament that had famous names the only players basically missing here uh, from the from the world top were uh, world champion uh, Jose Raul Capablanca and uh, former world champion uh, Emmanuel Lasker, but uh, everyone else was was pretty much here, and uh, the tournament got organized uh, under the uh, well, not the pa patronage, but um, uh, Dr. Siegbert Tarash went to the uh, uh, authorities basically in Baden-Baden, and he uh, inquired as if it was possible to organize um, a, a big tournament like they did, uh, for example, in um, uh, 18, 1870. In 1870, there was a great tournament in Baden-Baden that was won by Adolf Andresen. Uh, he won it half a point out of the uh, ahead of uh, first world champion uh, Wilhelm Steinitz, even though, okay, he was not world champion at the time, uh, but still it was a, a spectacular event. And this, again, uh, is one such event. We're going to discuss who participated uh, after we check out the game, as uh, we might even show all the games, at least all of the games uh, Alekhin played here, because they're just um, a very, very enjoyable. But uh, you guys are, are, of course, welcome to chip in. W would you guys enjoy such a thing? Uh, so let's check it out. Reti has the white pieces, and he opens with not the Reti opening, but with the G3. Uh, the so-called King's Fianchetto opening. We have e5 by Alekhin and now knight to f3. And now uh, the thing is, um, as I already mentioned, Reti is sort of the father of hypermodern chess. Uh, he uh, uh, they, they considered that the center should be controlled by pieces. So you should put the knight on f3, bishop on g2, and that way you will control some very nice central squares here, and you don't want to put your pawns uh, in the in the center of the board. Uh, th therefore, uh, your opponent will uh, advance his pawns forward and later you will be able to undermine them so that's basically the crude idea and Alekhin accepts this challenge he plays e4 knight to d4 and now pawn to d5 so he grabs the full center he says all right show me this uh, hyper modern stuff you you are talking about we have d3 captures and queen captures and it is already now as of move five that we have a move uh, or rather a position that has never happened again after this game. So knight to f6, uh, Alekhin continues development, bishop to g2, and now bishop to b4 with check. If this was a modern game, probably c5 would be played, but Alekhin has his own way of doing things. Bishop d2, we have captures, captures, and now Alekhin castles. We have c4, uh, challenging the d5 pawn, and here Alekhin goes knight to a6. Again, in a modern game, c5 would happen here, no questions asked, but again yeah uh, you'll see <laughs> uh Alekhin is now uh waiting for c captures on d5 and then he's going to remaneuver the knight knight before will attack the queen recapture on d5 then he's going to play c6 and his knights will be nicely placed after all of this initial horsing around so c captures on d5 knight to b4 attacks the queen and the d5 pawn queen c4 and knight captures on d5 so the knights are now very nicely placed knight 2 to b3 and now pawn to c6 and here finally reti castles uh we have rook to e8 putting pressure on that e2 pawn and now rook f to d1, aligning the rook with Alekhin's queen here. Bishop to g4, uh, putting pressure on the e2 pawn, but also if the pawn moves, then the rook would hang. So uh, rook to d2 by Reti, and now queen to c8. Now Alekhin wants to play bishop to h3 and trade off this uh, light square bishop as it's a very strong defender of uh, uh, white's position. So knight to c5, uh, now preparing b4, a4, and b5. He says your attack on the king side isn't really all that much. Uh, bishop to h3, but now just bishop to f3. We have bishop to uh, bishop to g4, again offering a trade of bishops, and Reti again declines. Bishop to h3, bishop to f3, and the bishop to g4. And now Reti uh, does not repeat, he plays bishop to h1. And there was uh, some discussion here whether uh, it was... Um, 
uh, whether this position was repeated uh, uh, two times or was it repeated uh, three times or rather not it was repeated once or twice and then uh, did Rieti have the option of uh, claiming a draw by threefold repetition uh, some say he didn't some say he did I didn't um, uh, find any uh, a decisive proof of um, uh, whether it was the position or, or it wasn't uh, because they say that Alekhin published it like uh, Rieti could never have um, uh, you know seized that threefold repetition Repetition, uh, as Alekhin does consider this one of his uh, better games, but okay, uh, not really, not really uh, uh, the point. As you guys are interested in what is coming next, so here Alekhin starts the attack. He plays h5, and uh, Reti says, "All right, this is nothing, nothing really. Now I'm just gonna continue my play on the queen side." He plays b4. We have a6, stopping b5, and now rook to c1, just putting more pressure here. Uh, we have h4 by Alekhin and a4 now preparing b5 so h captures on g3 h captures and now queen to c7 uh, we have pawn to b5 a captures on b5 a captures on b5 and now comes the move that uh, well it does take an alien to find uh, and that of course is rook to e3 that's the that's the good stuff we can we can look at this one more time in slow motion rook to e3 so it's uh beautiful as it doesn't really do anything uh by itself but you can't really touch it if you touch the rook it's game over for example f captures on e3 uh just queen captures on g3 king f1 let's say knight captures on e3 is checkmate so that's out of the question so what can you do after this rook to e3 move uh it's um you know such an such an ugly move to, to have to face over the board uh but it's there and obviously there are some rook captures on g3 action so you have to be ready for that uh best thing to do uh in the game knight to f3 was played uh which is not the most precise way to do things the uh, only way to play this is bishop to f3 and after this white will be white will be okay so uh, bishop to f3 is the only good way to counter this rook to e3 brilliancy by alekhin uh point is that after let's say bishop captures and e captures c captures and b5 will happen but now you have knight captures and b5 you attack the black queen and after queen to a5 rook c to d1 we, we defend our rook here and now rook captures and f3 you can capture the pawn here you don't have to capture the pawn you could play rook e1 check then capture the rook here so there are many options but uh, all in all white should be okay here uh, however uh, in the game knight to f3 was played and it seems like it's the same of course you, you are not allowing rook captures on g3 but there is one difference from the line that we've discussed you know that uh, we said that uh, after c captures on b5 knight captures on b5 was played well here's the problem and here Alekhin shows that this is the only way to play for win with black c captures on b5 and now uh Reti just has to step back and allow Alekhin to have this beautiful pass B pawn but Reti doesn't want to do that he claims the pawn and now this is a problem because now uh, Alekhin's position is winning but only if he finds the only move that wins the game so feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only move that wins the game for Alexander Alekhin uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on always uh, looking for ways to horse around more. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight to c3. That's the good stuff. Uh, this move just uh, does everything. It attacks the queen. It puts a piece in between the rook and your own queen. It attacks the e2 pawn, threatening check uh, and uh, a nice fork here uh, uh, over the rook on c1. So there is no good way to deal with this, but uh, uh, Reti was prepared for this. That's why he played queen captures on b5. Uh, but uh, Alekhin calculated this so far ahead that you simply cannot blame Mareti for not seeing this. And he here it comes. I, I can't even count the moves how far I Alekhin calculated here. Queen captures on b7. Uh, queen captures on b7. Knight captures on b7. Now comes knight captures on e2 with check. King to h2. And now, okay, perhaps uh, Reti was considering Alekhin will capture on c1. And that's, uh, you know, that's the end of it. But not really. Uh, because, of course, then we would capture on e3. Here, Alekhin played knight to e4. And what is this madness? Wh what kind of a position is this? The, the knight so weirdly placed the rook hanging the bishop on g4. Uh, the problem is if the rook is captured here. Then we play knight captures on d2. And how do you deal with this position? The rook is hanging and also your knight is attacked twice here. There just isn't a good way. Knight captures on d2, knight captures on c1. 
and you're up uh, you're, you're up the exchange you have a rook for a knight uh, of course this would be completely winning for Alehin. so instead after knight e4 uh, Reti defends with uh, engine like precision he plays rook to c4 attacks um, uh, well, not the knight, but if the knight moves, then the bishop will hang, uh, but it doesn't matter. Knight captures an f2, and now look at this. Everything is defended. The rook defends the knight, the knight defends the bishop. Uh, uh, what can what can uh, Reti play here? He plays bishop to g2. Yeah, it's not much of a, much of a move, but uh, th there isn't anything better. And now Alekhin again shows uh, everything that he had in mind. Bishop to e6. He just clears the e g4 square for his knight with tempo uh, as the rook is hanging. Rook c to c2, putting pressure on the knight. Now knight to g4 with check. And now what do you play? You can't really go to h1. If you go to h1, rook a1, and you are getting checkmated in 10 moves. Uh, so you have to go to h3, but now you are under the mask of the bishop. So now knight to e5 with check, a discovery from the bishop. King h2, now comes rook captures on f3. Beautifully played. Uh, rook captures on e2. Uh, the problem is if bishop captures on f3, then knight captures on f3 comes with check. That's another fork. King g2, knight captures on d2, and after rook captures, uh, of course, you are down a full piece. Uh, you're down a bishop. There's no playing this. So uh, instead, after rook captures on f3, rook captures on e2 was played, but now again, knight to g4 with check, and again, you cannot afford to go to the back rank. Rook to a1 will end the game. That's, uh, you know, after you give up all of your pieces, then uh, Alekhin will just checkmate you. So king to h3 and now knight to e3 check, delivering another discovery uh, and also forking the rook on c2. King h2, knight captures on c2 and now bishop captures on f3. And it seems like it's perfectly fine. I mean, uh, of course, Reti is only down one pawn, but Alekhin saw all of this plus he saw knight to d4, the only winning move for Alekhin. And it was uh, only once he played this on move 40 that Richard Reti resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is the rook and bishop are attacked. If you defend the bishop, uh, not a problem. Just knight captures rook captures and look at this. Bishop the uh, d5 attacking that weirdly placed knight on b7 attacking the rook and of course rook to b3 is impossible because the bishop covers that square. Absolutely incredible. And after knight to d4, of course, your other option is to maybe play knight ca uh, rook captures bishop, giving up the exchange. But after knight captures, good luck playing this. You're down the exchange against Alekhin and you're down a pawn. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Alekhin wins this blindfolded. So, yeah, uh, truly a spectacular victory by uh, Alexander Alekhin. Everything started with this uh, incredible uh, idea after he captures on b5, just to rook to e3. The move in itself. Uh, does not win on the spot. It's possible to defend it, but who would find bishop to f3? Uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, it's easy to analyze games like this, you know, after uh, almost 100 years. It's like 97 years after this game was played, uh, uh, but and now we just say, okay, but yeah, bishop to f3 and white is better. Uh, white is slightly better, <laughs> not better. White is, uh, you know, ever slightly better. Uh, but after knight to f3, it's just all, all Alekhin, uh, you know, after c captures on b5, the, the, there's just no playing this. So truly uh, a, a beautiful showing by Alekhin. I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. And these are the final standings of the tournament. Uh, maybe uh, maybe after the Olympiad, if you guys are interested, I was uh, considering even showing all of the games Alekhin played in this tournament as um, it, it was a pretty, pretty brilliant brilliant showing uh, uh, by Alekhin. You can see that he won first place ahead of all of these names. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, from the top names, uh, only Capablanca and Lasker were missing. Uh, Alekhin uh, wins first place with 16 out of 20 with 12 wins, 0 losses and 8 draws, followed by uh, inc some incredible legendary names like Akiba Rubinstein, Friedrich Semi, Efim Bogolyubov, uh, Savili Tartakover, Frank Marshall, Ilya Rabinovich, Ernst Grunfeld, uh, Aron Nimzovich, Karl Karl Storer Repeto, Rudolf Spielmann, Richard Reti, Karl Tribal, Karl uh, Karls, uh, so, uh, uh, I mean Tarash, all the way, uh, all the way in the back. I mean, simply uh, any incredible result for Alekhin, but uh, even more incredible, you know, not that he didn't lose a single game. A lot of players uh, were able to win tournaments without losing a single game, but with playing spectacular chess like Alekhin did. 
uh, very, very few people throughout chess history who <laughs> were able to do just that. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed this and, uh, you know, do mention if you would like to see more uh, of Alekhin's games from this tournament, I'm considering covering it in its entirety, so, you know, uh, maybe may something to consider. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Omicron, uh, uh, Pico Chess Cali, Ishmael Rivera, uh, Joshua Figueroa Lintag and uh, Richard Nickerson for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your one wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. Like I said, uh, the Olympiad is coming up um, uh, very soon. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.